Well, hey, Freedom Church. Uh, we're so glad you guys are with us today. Uh, if you don't know me, I am Josh Wells. I am the family pastor at Freedom, and I'm here with my friend. Abigail Billings. Well, hey, Abby. So I just wanted you to just share a little bit of what your faith journey has looked like. My faith journey. Okay. <laughs> Um, so for most of my life, I was actually atheist, um, agnostic sometimes, but pretty much atheist. Uh, that's, that's what my family is. So most people tend to follow along with their family. It wasn't until I was 13 that I really started to wonder if there was something beyond what my family thought. I think that's when most kids start to wonder if their parents are right about everything or if they disagree with them on anything. Um, I attended several churches in my hometown and I felt like everywhere I went, um, there was something blocking God, mm. if there was a God there. It, it felt like everywhere I went, I was always the newcomer and that wasn't necessarily a good thing. And I didn't know any of the things I was supposed to know. I always seemed to say the wrong thing. And um, so it would get tricky. And it, it was hard to see God in all of that. I felt like I was there. I was always being pressed by, like, rules. And I couldn't do it. Um, so by the time I was 17, I'd kind of given up on that and had landed on my parents were right. There wasn't a God. And um, that's what I did. And that was the case until I was 21. So when I was 21, um, I went to freedom at a baby shower. My mm -hmm. aunt, Carrie, uh, Carrie Sorensen is probably how most of you know her, if you know her at all. Uh, now she is Carrie Salisbury, um, went to freedom for a long time and she had her baby shower there. And so of course I went at her niece and after the party was over, I was trying to figure out where stuff went and I'd never been there before. So it's literally just the logistics of walking around the building, trying to find a closet or table. Go. Yeah. And I ended up in the sanctuary and mm -hmm. it looked very different from most sanctuaries I'd been in. And so I just, I stood there for a couple of minutes and then you actually walked up <laughs> And at the time, I think you were the worship leader and you said, Hey, you introduced yourself and you said you could always come to service tomorrow. And I'm like, cool. No, thanks. Staying as non-committal as humanly possible. Cause I don't like to <laughs> fair done with churches. Yeah. And I was not interested, but I was trying to be nice. And then later I was helping my aunt um, put all of her stuff away in her house and she and I were sitting down chatting and she was like, Hey, so Josh mentioned to me, you're coming to church tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and I didn't want to be rude. This was my eight months pregnant aunt and I could not break her heart. And mm. I literally remember thinking, what another church? Not a big deal. I'll go and I'll make her happy. Be home in time for nap. Not a big deal. Like, <laughs> so the next day I went to church and, um, the interesting thing is, is it was Easter. Mm. When you're, um, an adult atheist, Easter means nothing to you. Um, which now seems sad, but it didn't. It meant that I would get chocolate next time I went to my parents. That's, yeah. that's what Easter meant. But it was Easter. So there were a lot of people there. It's a big event. A lot of people are excited. And I am, as usual, an outsider who doesn't have a clue what to say. <laughs> and I was very concerned. Um, mm. But I felt this like nervousness I hadn't felt before. Yeah. Um, and what ended up happening was I sat next to my aunt and my grandma. And um, the song started playing. The first song was No Longer Slaves by mm. 
Bethel Music, I believe. And I just started like bawling. I hadn't cried in public in years. I was, I was very tough, very uh, stone hearted, definitely. And I, I was, didn't do stuff like that, but I was crying and couldn't stop. And my aunt is just holding me while I cry. And I keep saying, I don't know why I'm crying. I am so sorry. I don't know why I'm crying. And she was like, it's very normal. It's completely fine. You're fine. And through the rest of the songs, I don't think I, I remember the other two. I couldn't stop crying. And then the message started. And the message of Easter is this message of redemption. It's, mm. it's the message of rising again the message of hope given when there hasn't hope. And I had spent so much of my life searching that and not finding that. And then um, those last few years of my life between 17 and 21, where I'd given up on finding God and I found God were hard ones, really, really hard ones. And so this message of hope and this idea that there can be light again, there hasn't yeah. been light, meant so much to me as this very, very, very lost person. And for the first time, it felt like I was meeting God, actually meeting God with, with nothing in the way of that. With mm. a mention of the fact that I didn't know the whole Easter story that I didn't know what I was supposed to be sharing, that I didn't know the words to the songs. It was, oh, it's just God and I right now. And that's what it felt like. It felt like I was just standing in front of God bawling. And all I was hearing was you are loved and you are redeemed. And wow, it was a big thing. It, it felt monumental and it was, still is. Um, and since then, all I've been trying to do is just be worthy of that, which isn't what you're supposed to do, but it's what I struggle with still, is feeling worthy of that love, of that redemption. Um, but my faith journey now mostly consists of battles with God. And I say that with complete respect for who God is, obviously, knowing that he's mm -hmm. big enough to handle my disagreements and my misunderstanding. And so now what I do, you know, sometimes my prayers are really praiseful and really excited and really thankful for the life that I've given. But sometimes I still struggle with those same questions I've always had, where I'm like, this isn't fair, or why did this happen? Um, but it, I, I feel that I always get an answer. And if I don't get an answer, I get peace. Mm. And that's wow. enough right now. Um, so that's that's been it that's been my life since 2016 was when i was saved so it's been four years now but yeah yeah that's awesome so four years i remember that first you know i don't remember everybody's journey and everything but i remember that baby shower specifically and talking to you and even when i talked to you i felt like i already knew you so it didn't <laughs> it didn't seem weird then um i don't remember inviting you I remember talking to you. So yeah. that's super, super cool. And now we even get to serve together on yes. the kids team. Yes. I've got to see your family, your husband and your little boy and stuff and all the growth and all that has been so, so neat to see you give back. On top of that, you're a nurse. So you already give back a ton. <laughs> you are a hero. And we thank you for that. Can you tell us a little bit of, since the last four years, what has, what has changed? What's changed in your family? Um, what's, what's changed in you? What's different from that first day? So from that first day, um, luckily I was saved right before my husband and I got married, which I am forever grateful for because he was, he was a Christian, but he hadn't, uh, been going to church in a long time. He hadn't been reading his Bible in a long time. So we were able to go into our marriage with this newfound respect for marriage and newfound respect for what God could do in our marriage. And I'm so thankful for that. It, it gets you through the tough parts. And, um, but our life 
basically since then. So we built that found built our marriage on that foundation now, and we're now able to raise our son in a God fearing household and in a household that prays before we go to bed, uh, tries to read through the Bible together. And, um, I'm so grateful for that, that he gets to be raised in a household like that. And honestly, it's kind of nice that he's being raised by one person who was raised Christian, who knows every story, who's been a part of all of that. But he also is, he's with his mom who, um, has made the mistakes and has done those things. And we both yeah. get and like that. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Um, and since then, I think the big difference in who I am is a belief that it can get better. They even aren't okay immediately, they can get better. Whereas before it felt like it was bad, it was bad and there was no getting it back. And now I've started to see even old, old wounds, God has healed and awesome. into something that I can help others with it now. And so I think I just have a hope now. I have a hope even when things aren't great, they can get better and God will find a way to make it good again. That's a good thing to have in this world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. That's so encouraging. One last thing. What would you say to the person who's like you, who's nervous to go to church. And obviously right now in the situation of our world, we can't exactly walk through the doors of the church. But right. someone even thinking about, should I watch a video? Should I listen to this? Would I be judged? What would you, what would you say to that person? Easter is next week, is next yeah. Sunday. What would you say to that person? I would say set all ideas aside of what you think it's supposed to be. Set all ideas aside of who you think you're supposed to be. And just go prepared to meet God. Mm. Actually, God. And with the idea that God doesn't judge the way people do. And he doesn't judge the way you do. And he's, yeah. he's going to see you differently. And that is such a beautiful thing to see yourself the way God sees you. Um, and especially in times of quarantine, you don't even have to worry about going and someone looking at you funny. It's just you do the laptop. You do you. Yes. You ask, you ask your questions and go with that mindset of, hey, it's one more church, right? It won't be the end. That's so good. That's so encouraging. Uh, Abby, I really think your story is going to encourage so many people as it has encouraged me and just to see your faith journey. And I think it's going to encourage people to not be afraid to check into church and see what's going on, because I think that judgment is a really big thing that a lot of us fear. Yeah. And knowing that you've been accepted, man, yeah. how your family's changed and <laughs> even what your ministry and your life has turned into through all of this, I think is just super cool. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you.